everyone, it's Michelle. Welcome to my studio. I'm here working on my Magpie Journal, which if you don't know what my Magpie Journal is, I will link a video to a flip through in the box below. And this video actually is being taped before the flip through because my book isn't done, but I will have all these videos out at approximately the same time. So I will go into more about what a Magpie Journal is in that video, but I wanted to jump into the cover today. I'm using a Bible study cover. So this was a Bible study book, probably not that old, maybe 15, 20 years old tops. It was leather and it stitched. The inside was completely trashed. I gutted it, but I really loved the grain. I loved how used it was. And I'm not sure if you can see, but the spine had really seen better days. It was all flaking off, and I wasn't sure how I could use this without it to continue to flake. So what I did was I put on some gesso, and then I put in some ink, alcohol inks and some patina paint, and I just sort of like protected that so that it doesn't flake anymore. So right now it doesn't look all that great, but I have a lot more to do on it. This was a, a very, an antique textile that I wanted to use on the spine as sort of like a, I don't know, just a very interesting spine piece, and I'll continue to work on that as well. It's, I had glued it on, but I've taken it off because I shouldn't have done that step, but you know, lesson learned. Anyway. I have, an, I have some ideas for what I want to do with the cover, and I thought I would just turn on the camera and let you see what I'm doing. So I made myself up a little kit for this. Um, I found three vintage pictures of magpies, and I did, you know, made them uh, uh, like a digital, you know, they're digital pieces here. And then I found um, this piece of a notebook um, it was in public domain, and it was a, like a naturalist notebook, and it talked about magpies. So I am going to use this little digital I made, and I'll have this available to you guys for free when this video um, airs, and I'll put in the description box below how you get that. So what I did was I took those antique photo albums that have uh, cabinet cards in them and things like that, you can find them at flea markets and they're, you know, oftentimes in horrible condition. So what I did is I cut a quarter of the page and it, it's card, it's stock, you know, like cards, not cardstock, like um, chipboard. And it has, this is probably, this piece I'm holding has got to be well over a hundred years old. There were four pictures on a page and I cut it down. And what I did is I cut out one of my magpies and I just put a little glue on it to hold it in place so you could see and what I'm going to do is continue to glue that in on the paper actually I should trim that because it's just a hair too long So now that is glued in place. And what I'm going to do, let me see if I'm in frame. I'm gonna to try to sit down here. I'm in my studio, the light's a little wonky because of the time of day. And I tried to be prepared so that you didn't have to suffer through all my indecision making. So what I did is I took two pieces of lace that are not that old. I bought them from like Hobby Lobby or something. So they're their new available laces. And I put some um, Tim Holtz stain on them. You probably could av avocado dye them or coffee dye them, but I just didn't have any handy at the moment. And then I overlapped them and just came in with a zigzag stitch on my um, sewing machine. So what I'm going to do is my first step is I'm gonna glue this lace down right about here. And I think I want this stitching to show. So what I'll do 
So I will take my Fabri-Tac. See if I can come in here. And I will put a bead down here. But before I glue down the lace, I will smooth it out because I don't want it to come, I don't want that shiny bit to show through too much in the, through the lace. Okay, that's nice and straight. And then I want to glue these two pieces down. Where they are on top of overlapping that lace. Okay. Now I have this piece and I'm going to slide it just under here. I think I'm going to put it there. Now I don't know if you can see, but I kept the fabric side where it went in the binding of the old book it's like this nice little maroon color and what I'm even though it is that already has a nice patina I'm just gonna go in and do a little bit of inking Now I en enlarged the magpie um, writing. And I think I might want to put that right on the top of my picture there. As sort of the descriptor, but I do like that filigree too. So. I'll have to decide where I want to put that. But one thing I do know is I have this piece of cheesecloth that I coffee stained a while back. And this slot is where you put the photo in and out in the photo album. And I'm, oh, I sh that's why I didn't have the bottom glued in. I knew there was a reason. I would like to push this through that slot See, I knew there was a reason why I didn't glue the bottom. I'm going to pull this through the slot, this cheesecloth. And you see it kind of looks like a little bit like a nest when it's pulled through. This is so delicate, I don't want to rip the paper. get that little piece in. Hold on, let me get my scissors and feed it through. There we go. Okay. That's how I want it. So what I need to do now is I need to put a little bit of Fabri-Tac down here. Ugh. I need to add some, uh, obviously I need to add some, thin this out. I'm going to stick this cheesecloth up. And then I'm going to put a little bit of Fabri-Tac. Oh, it's so thick, 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 thick. At the end of a bottle here. It gets kind of goopy, you know, at the bottom. I'm going to put some here and here. And then I'm going to press that picture down. And what I think I might do 
is take a little bit of tape just to secure that. Since we're not going to see the back of it anyway. So now we have this kind of peeking up in there. So I'm going to pause here and we're going to reset the project on another work table that's easier for you to see. This time of the afternoon uh, it becomes difficult because the sun comes in from the wrong direction for taping and the, pretty soon the work table would be completely obscured by sunlight and very difficult for you to follow along. So I'm moving to another table, resetting the project, and we'll pick up from there. So come on over to part two where we can finish this cover together.